Good morning, ladies. Thank you for being here. Um, this morning, we're going to be talking about professional learning communities, and I'm sure all of you have heard already what a professional learning communities are, and some of you are already putting it into practice. So this morning, again, thank you for taking your time so that we can, I can share with you what professional learning communities are. Uh, we're gonna start by introducing ourselves. I'm gonna go first. My name is uh, Ms. Lopez. I am a kindergarten dual language, one-way uh, Spanish teacher. You wanna introduce um, yourself? I'm Carrie Quinn, and I am a kindergarten dual language English one-way teacher. Ms. Leon, bilingual self-contained Kenya. Um, Alicia Pomenig, I am a kindergarten Spanish two-way dual language teacher. Ms. Berry, I'm a kindergarten two-way English dual language teacher. Awesome. Okay, so we are a team of bilingual teachers and um, we, we already have our PLCs in place but we want to learn and elaborate more on these PLCs and how they can be effective so that we can help our kids in school. So what are PLCs? Can anybody think of a word? What, what do you think when we say PLCs, professional learning community? Share, collaboration. collaboration. Share, collaboration. Share an idea, okay. resources, strategy, resources. Yes. A good one strategies resources okay so I'm, I'm going to give you um, some uh, some research uh, what do, what does the research say and that's part of what you uh, you guys mentioned educators committed to working together using process of inquiry problem solving and reflection upon their practice and this is by Dufour he is one of the biggest researches about PLCs if it's not the one that started the movement for professional learning communities. So he's been really, really looking into uh, PLCs and how they can be more effective. So some of the things that he mentions in his research are examining uh, data on student progress, uh, analyzing student work, determining effective strategies, designing and critiquing powerful lessons, and developing classroom-based common uh, classroom-based common assessments to measure their progress. So this is what he mentioned we need to do in a PLC, in a professional learning community. And this is um, what a professional learning community must do as well. They must share a vision. This is just a quote that I like because I think uh, sharing the vision and knowing the vision of the campus is very important. How many of you know the vision? Be honest. How many of you know the vision of the campus? Do you know? Do you know where to find it? On the campus. On the website. Yeah. On the, the website. website. Yes. Yeah. We can find it on the website. I'm gonna see if I can find it really quick. Um, we can find it on the campus website. We have a mission. Go to um, district. If we go to the district page, oh, it's not showing. Okay. Well, I don't know why it's not sharing, but I'll share it. I'll share it with you right here. If you go to the website um, for our school, and we go to school information. Then we go to campus improvement plan. So the vision is in the campus improvement plan, and then it's a it's a long document. But the vision and the mission are on the top. So the the mission. The mission is that all students, without exception or excuse, will be proficient or advanced in reading, writing, and mathematics. That's our mission, right? And the vision that they created, the administration created with all the stakeholders is that we will work collaboratively across the campus, focusing on the needs of our students, providing an effective academic program, 
that allows each student to achieve their maximum potential. So I think it's very important that we that we are aware of our vision and our mission and that we uh, remember that, you know, that we are reminded of that as well um, constantly because that's, what, that's what's going to drive us to keep improving as teachers and to have successful students. So let me share again my, my slides. share it with you here okay. um, yeah because I'm, I will send this I will send this uh, slide as well okay so okay so we talked about the vision and now let's talk about the research uh, there's more there's extensive research about TLC but I'm just I just show, chose some quotes for you guys the school principal plays a vital role in the creation of a professional learning community so our principal she started or well we had it last year right as well we had it last year but this year, do we have something different? Have you noticed something different about our TLC? The ones that are hosted here? Yeah. On the Fridays that are hosted here? Well, no, our TLCs are like Tuesdays. They're just regular, yeah. Oh. They're scheduled, yes. So what do we have to do when we start our, our TLC? We, we have, have to lift the norms. norms. Yeah. We have to lift the norms, right? That is something that they mentioned that they should be in a TLC. Because uh, we, we wouldn't even do it before. So mm -hmm. now they, they started, they introduced that, the norms. So the principle begins by bringing people together to engage in a four step process. So there's four steps. And like I mentioned, uh, one is creating a mission statement, developing a vision, developing value statements and establishing goals. Um, there's three big ideas by Dufour, ensuring that students learn a culture of collaboration and a focus on results. So why is it important? Why is TLC important? Exactly, and it also develops a positive collegial relationship. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like we're the we're an awesome team, <laughs> and we share everything, and we communicate a lot. I think communication is, is vital, and we share knowledge, and we plan common strategies. Um, and they uh, PLCs must be specifically structured into a teacher's work schedule, so that way they they put it into one of our conference times. Uh, uh, they schedule it so that we can have authentic collaboration um, and also for us to feel safe. You know, in our group, I feel I think we feel safe to speak up and to to share and to uh, to share how we feel about all the activities that we're doing, all the data, all the assessments. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to show you two models of a TLC. Collaboration, how to fix technology. <laughs> I think your screen is a little bit. Right on. 
What did you see, Brittany? Well, I thought that my students. <laughs> um, I chose the student as exceeding the standards because instead of having only three headings, he wrote an extra heading about um, wolf pack leaders. And he also added a lot of voice, which I saw in most of my students. They added voice into their headings. Yeah. 
Can you show us an example of maybe where your student used some voice in their report? Um, under his heading, How Wolves Look, he said, Did you know wolves are six feet to nose all the way to their tail? That's long. So he commented on mm -hmm. the on the fact that he stated. Yeah, and I like the way that he did that because he's not only just adding voice, but also adding his opinion, you know, right. to, to tie in with that. And, yeah, we see that with those. Right. Nonfiction books that we researched um, before we started our report. What about you guys? I know I think you shared one. Yeah. Um, this one says they can kill a human with one scratch. That's cool. So she just <laughs> when she finds something interesting, she comments on it, and right. she you can tell that she's excited about what she's learning in, this, in her report. Okay. Mine's the same. They actually started theirs with voice that I think. Pandas are cute to you. Pandas are black and with big white spots. Also, they are four to five feet tall. Okay, so we could all agree that our kids who did exceed the standard did use their voice and mm -hmm. added in some of their opinion on what right. they thought about that particular animal. Right. Okay. Anything else that you noticed in your kids who exceeded the standard that we looked at with our rubric that you felt like they did a really good job on? I felt like Leeds was somewhere where I really noticed kids either exceeded or that, or were me. Like it was very clear the kids that were able to exceed or meet. Um, and especially with like the different types of leads, like hers says polar bears can kill a human with one scratch. These animals look sweet and cuddly, but they are fierce hunters. So she gives like a warning to the mm -hmm. to the reader, which I thought was really interesting. Um, one of my few students that did that. Okay. Um, why don't we look at our checklist too and kind of. Maybe. Okay, so that is that is one example. Um, I want to show you another example. They do some things different. I want you to uh, notice those things. Try to uh, find those things that are different. Okay, so here they are. It's a fourth grade um, TLC, and they're unpacking the standard. So Whoa, I want you, adapted mind is mad. I want Come you to in. notice the what they do. What they do different. important that teachers work together to unpack the standards into clear, specific, student-friendly learning objectives. This is the first step that is connected to daily classroom practice. When teachers across a grade level have a common understanding of what the standards mean, then they have common expectations for what students should know, understand, and be able to do. This is how we begin a continuous cycle of improvement and raise the achievement levels of all students. Let's watch how these fourth grade teachers do that. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. 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 So before we start, I really want to make sure that we go over our norms. So we're going to honor our start and end times, make sure that we get everybody out of here when they're supposed to be. We're going to state our objective and stay focused. We're going to actively listen and participate, voice and respond, to concerns positively and non-judgmentally. We're going to address violations of the norms and we're gonna slow down to think, reflect, and puzzle about things. All right, so everybody's in agreement with the norms. So we know that in the past we've been using textbook series that maybe aren't always the closest to the standards. Uh, you know, they say on the front that they are, but maybe not aligned as we would like them. So it was really important for us to go through this process of trying to unpack the standards and making sure that we're addressing all the standards we need to. Uh, so we'll be taking a look at uh, the measurement and data standards today. So what I did was I created um, a packet for you. So you have your TAN packet. Nice. Um, and in front of the TAN packet, we have our um, curriculum document, which is actually a Google Doc. Uh, so you can access the Google Doc using the address on the packet. And if you flip a couple pages, about four pages in to the packet, you'll notice that we have those same um, unpacking the standard sheets that we've been using. And today I have pre-printed these seven different standards that we're going to be unpacking in the measurement and data unit. So let's take a look at measurement and data uh, number three. It's the first thing we want to do. Um, is look at the language of the standard as it's written, and we're going to be um, underlining the nouns, and then we'll be circling the verbs to get started. And in the past 
couple weeks, it's worked really well when other people have taken the opportunity to uh, read the standard out loud and sort of lead the discussion. Uh, so Randy, if you want to start uh, with standard three. Sure. Standard three, apply the area and perimeter formulas for rectangles in real world and mathematical problems. For example, find the width of a rectangular room given the area of the flooring and the length by viewing the area formula as a multiplication equation with an unknown factor. And uh, underline, and then we'll go over what we have. Okay, so once you have all of your nouns underlined, why don't we start going over? I had area and perimeter. Okay. Rectangles. I also have formulas in there. Mm -hmm. as right, because well. they're talking about specific knowing the formula. And they did specifically mention that um, it needs to be real world problems and mathematical problems. Mm -hmm. So if we make a note of that. So let's move on to the verbs. I had apply. apply. Find. Find. I also have view. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's move on to our web's depth of knowledge. Okay, so we see different models, right? Different models of POCs. And Dufour in the research, he mentioned one of those. And he mentioned, I think, both of them. So what I want you to do now in your, um, in your activity is I want you to talk to your partner. I want you to talk to your partner about the different characteristics that you found in the different models, okay? So go ahead and talk to your partner for a minute and talk about the different characteristics. What did they do in the in those two different POCs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Outcomes for students is like what they're looking for versus what they were teaching and how they were teaching them. So organized. Like one was a before we teach. Yeah, exactly. One was a before we teach, and then the other was the result. Well, the result and reflecting back on what do we need to change next time. What, what did they do well? What did they not do well? Yeah, I think it was more centered on the student's words that they were looking at. Yeah, exactly. Here, I think that's more teacher with the standards and what the teacher. It was more relaxed. I think the first one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, like oh, it's not. I think that's what they said. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what is what is one thing? What is one thing that you found? One char or characteristic that you found? Reading out the norms. The second group had their norms written out versus okay. the first group who they might have stated them orally or just said what the objective was for the meeting, mm -hmm. but they didn't right. have them written down. Right. Is there anything else that you want to share? So the, the second, the first group was very informal, like they just kind of spoke out when it was, when they felt like they had something that applied. And it felt more like the second group had a defined leader, had a defined process to it. Yeah, they had a job. Well, a job, a position right. or a job, yes. Excellent. Okay, so here, uh, this is our POC schedule as of right now. We have, uh, we meet on Tuesday, and that's, that's a schedule for each team um, and that's their conference time. Okay, so um, here we see all the teams, but later we're gonna we're gonna go into how we can make it more more effective, because right now it's just the teams that are meeting, right? It's, we're not collaborating with with other teams, right? So um, in your uh, paper, you have the. The, the first paper that I gave you is a T-chart. Um, go ahead and uh, collaborate with your partner. And on the left side, I want you to um, list, um, I want you to think first, talk to your partner first, and write down the effective, effective uh, POCs. And on your right side, you're gonna write the non-effective characteristics of a POC. So what are some things that you found were effective? I think, um, I'm like jumping across the map. That's okay. <laughs> That's what I was, I was going to say, that 
they had a purpose, they had a defined plan. Mm -hmm. uh, even though the meetings, I like her organ organized. I mean, they had a, a sort of meeting. I mean, that is important, but the set goal for what their conversation was. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There was definitely, yeah, there was, a, there was somebody that was for the teacher in charge. That was Breaking really, up the theater. Yeah, that way she knows how to plan her lesson. Mm -hmm. I, think everybody, mm -hmm. I think everybody was in, yeah, everybody knows the norms and everybody yeah. was involved. Yeah. There wasn't just, oh, I'm going to talk to this person. She she had, they all had a packet, they all had their supplies. I don't remember exactly how we did it, but we broke it down. But you know, she gave them all packets so that they could work along. It wasn't just a, that was like, something while I speak to you about it. It was a, um, um, able to teach it be better. Yeah. It was active yeah. training. She had them circling so and marking the packet, the packet not just things. reading it all. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. She also comes like, it's really long. Yeah. What the focus was. And the teacher was. can better understand it yeah. and apply it. Yeah. I mean, the amount of effect would just be the opposite of that. Like, just not having... Not having a reason for any Are we comparing just those meetings, what we felt it was effective and not effective? Or is no, what we no, in general, yes. in general. Yes, what do you think okay. would be non effective? So, like a non effective yeah. would be if you went into a meeting but didn't have something goal, specific to like talk about. Topic. Yeah. A defined goal. Like everyone had their own thing they wanted to talk about. Or or agenda. Or no, like no agenda. No agenda. Would be, yeah, you know, no agenda. <laughs> If it was like no organization or no flow, like no plan, we're going to talk about this, this, this today, and here's your papers, here's your things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Non effective. Non effective. Not being prepared. Oh, if they're not on the set day. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have 30 more seconds? Okay. Yeah, if they're outside or if they run long. I mean, we know how that is when they run really long and then you're scrambling to get everything squeezed in. All of those ladies knew what to bring to be prepared for. Yeah. They didn't stay there until they got there and they said, hey, go find all your kids' work that needs all these things. And then they left and came back with empty ones. So. Mm -hmm. Don't take them to the board. Okay, so... Um, who wants to share? What are some effective? Let's start with the effective. Um, we said organization is important and then um, breaking down the objectives so that the teacher can better understand what she's going to be teaching so that she can apply it to help her students. We said that we, we felt that the first one was more um, student-centered and we're looking at the student's work right. versus the second one, break, um, Unloading the standard is helping the teacher that way she can better um, lesson, do her lesson plan better, um, the way that she's um, presenting her instruction. So that's helping the teacher. Absolutely. And both of them had a specific purpose. It yeah. was very obvious the first group was concerned about the results and trying to fix what the way they taught it right. or how they were going to change it. And the first one was making that plan before, before they taught it. it. So it was kind of a before and after. Right. This is process before and after the lesson. Yeah. Okay. So, what are some ineffective or non-effective? Not having a specific goal that you're focused on for the TLC meeting, I think, is important. Like she said, to have a goal that you're focused on for that meeting because it, then it's more effective. And not being prepared, not having the right. one the one leader had copies for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For them to work along with, and then the first one. They already knew what they were supposed to bring to the meeting. They all were prepared. Right. They were all prepared with all of their things to share versus going, oh, we're sharing that, and everybody had to leave and go find it. Mm -hmm. That's that. So time management, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So now, um, in your other paper, you have another paper. We have a few minutes. In your other paper, I want you to think about ways. Go ahead and talk to your partner as well. Think about ways how we can improve our POC. Go ahead, go ahead and brainstorm and think about ways how we can improve, how we can make it better uh, based off on these videos that you watched, uh, these exemplar videos, and based off on the research that the four mentioned. I think you need to have a specific purpose. Like, we need to know ahead of time if we're going to be talking about progress monitoring or if we're going to have guest speakers in our meetings and maybe not try to do all of planning and all of that in one meeting. 
it's very hard to gauge everything in and message it a little uh, well. You know, like we have somebody from admin come in, but then we're still expected to do our planning at the same time. It's very, our attention is divided. So like, and maybe we don't change the goal every meeting. Maybe you can have a point of every month or something. So, so I guess it's better scheduling for the purpose of the meeting, our known purpose. And maybe not try to squeeze everything into the same meeting. Like you have to meet again. I'd rather meet again than have it all like smashed. Because then it feels like we don't cover anything well. You know, when we have something new, like for example, if we have a new class, something new that we have to do, take our time to have a specific TLC regarding that. And yeah, that'd be good. So more a more narrow focus to our TLCs. Let's go ahead and share a little bit of, uh, let's go ahead and share about ways to improve. We put um, collaborating with all the kinder teams, even if it has to be a PLC that is at the school. Um, and then also taking consideration of other kinder classes on other campuses that they, that they need to be brought in too, because we're all kinder. So yeah. what are they doing over there? So. Especially with the way our campus is set up, we're not a regular school district. I mean, we have all kindergarten on one campus. I mean, well, for the most part, except mm -hmm. for those campuses. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. what about the time? What, what do you think about the time? Well, well we're just collaborating with our <laughs> teams, and the time is fine. But if you ever want to collaborate with the entire school, that mm -hmm. time's not going to work unless it's on a Friday. Friday part of yeah. That was my thing with the narrowing the focus because we try to squeeze too much into that one time and we end up not doing anything or covering anything well or in depth. We just kind of skim over everything and then all go back to our, you know, back to our corners or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, but I think Fridays could, could help mm -hmm. too. But we just don't have a sign. We haven't been assigned to do that. We don't have a schedule. Our schedules is always for other things for yeah. different PD. Okay. Is there anything else? I mean, a common goal um, so that we can narrow down what we're going to be focused on. Yeah. Or every week. Right. Mm -hmm. Either every week or every month. I mean, like, we're just right. focused right. hard on that one goal. To every month that we can have baby steps. steps. Mm -hmm. Right, baby mm -hmm. steps every, mm -hmm. every, all those four weeks. Exactly. Okay. Is there anything else? That's it. Well, thank you, ladies. I hope uh, this served uh, my purpose of sharing with you what TLCs are, and thank you for your time. <laughs>